I've done it four times um, on stage, but it's, you know, it's, it still doesn't help. It doesn't matter if you've done well before. It doesn't mean you'll do well. Please, this please join me in welcoming to the stage the brand new, never before seen set list of Richard Herring. You're out of your comfort zone, as I'm sure everyone says, and that's kind of a good thing. As a comedian, it's kind of it's good to sort of push yourself and see what comes out. I spend a lot of time in my attic, and um, it's where I like to write. And uh, then I kind of get Twitter, and I think, oh, I know, I'll tweet something mildly offensive about women. And uh, <laughs> but you know, in a way, I realise how lucky I am to be born in the generation I have been born in, because uh, for Anne Frank, for example, the, uh, the famous uh, Jewish uh, hideaway. <laughs> Her form of Twitter was just a book. It was a very slow process. The cut. She'd think of something, she'd write it down, think, that's brilliant, can't wait to show that to all of my... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Every single day, she'd write down the meaningless shit that happened to her. She was just stuck in a tiny little room. It's basically your life. That's what's happened there. You, live, you work in a tiny little office where you have to go and you think, I know, I'll, I'll tweet my friends about all the brilliant stuff I've been doing, they'll love it. Uh, she was forced to do this and she got a book deal out of it, so uh, it didn't work out so badly... <laughs> ...eventually. <laughs> we all have a Barry in our lives, I think. Maybe not literally. Um, can't think of a single Barry, uh, I have to say. <laughs> and maybe that's the Barry rule. Maybe the Barry rule is that Barry is a name we think exists. <laughs> but actually nobody has called it, I can't think. I thought of one, Barry Norman. There, there, the Barry is the exception that proves the rule. That is how things work. He's the only one. Um, he has a 13-inch penis now when it's erect, and not many people know this. And Barry was annoyed. Barry Norman was annoyed that whenever he came to measure his 13-inch penis, the rulers that he was given... <laughs> ...proved to be inadequate by the sum of one inch. So Barry Norman invented his own measuring device, the Barry Norman rule. <laughs> People said, no one will buy that. He said, I'll call it the Barry rule. He said, that worked. 13 inches long. It's like a baker's dozen <laughs> for penis measure. <laughs> now, you might think communion is personal enough as it is. When we go to church, if we're Roman Catholic, a man gives us a piece of bread and a sip of wine. That is the blood and body of Jesus Christ. That's pretty personal, isn't it? And then you have to eat it. There's Catholics out there just eating Jesus' body and blood every single week. How many weeks does it take them until they've eaten a whole Jesus, though? That is the question. <laughs> I mean, it's, you know, it's representative at the moment. It's just bread. It's just blood. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Can't believe I'm going this way. Uh, uh, <laughs> what could we do to over-personalise the communion? What would, be, what would be the worst thing we could do? Now, you don't, might not know this, but uh, Jesus was a Jew. Yeah. Some surprises for you tonight here in Brixton. <laughs> of course, he was circumcised, wasn't he? Um, <laughs> and uh, what I'm saying is, you know, if you'd circumcised Jesus, you'd think this kid's special, I'm going to hold on. I'm going to hold on to that, see if it's worth something down the line. I can take that. And so they held on, that got passed down. This is absolutely historically true. There is Jesus' foreskins and the foreskins of all the saints out and about. And I think if you really believe in Jesus and really think you're a fantastic Catholic, you shouldn't be eating bits of bread. That is insulting to Jesus. <laughs> I think you're only a proper Catholic if you eat part of Jesus' cock. That is what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> Some people have said to me, I think you've over-personalised the communion there, Richard. And I say, I don't think I have. I think it's made its best. If you want to be the best at religion, that's what you've got to do. You've been fantastic. Thanks for bearing with me through the difficult times. It's nice to uh, get it done and over. And yeah.
<laughs> Dude, you went to Jesus Cock. <laughs> Jesus Cock. I went there. I went there. I went there. I knew I was going there. I couldn't pull back. There was no escape. <laughs> Lots of cultures have done circumcision, and that part of the ceremony was to eat the foreskin at the end of the oh, ceremony. Is that right? Yeah. And so that, but so there's an argument that uh, that Holy Communion, Catholic Holy Communion, come, comes out of that. So when you're eating Jesus' body, you are kind of eating his foreskin. The Anne Frank's tweets. You just, I should have just said, made up some tweets of Anne Frank to name three and then go these are because then that that would you're work. You're doing it. You're doing it now. Aren't you? Yeah, yeah. But you're you're doing, doing the what I should yeah, have yeah. said. Yeah, so. yeah. The great nightmare about this show, I think, is not being up there trying to think of stuff. It's spending the next three days thinking, oh, why didn't I say that?